Have you ever felt like this? Or this? Or you're just tired and weepy all the time? Well, no, it's not you. It's probably your hormones. And what we're gonna do today in this video is break down the hormones that you need to know. There are about seven key hormones that you should be tracking every six months to understand what your patterns are, when you're getting in trouble, and when you might need to be optimized. Here we go, number one, the master hormone, insulin. What is insulin? Well, insulin is the blood sugar hormone. It regulates if our blood sugar is high, if it's low, if we're gonna store belly fat, or if we're gonna be an iron pumping machine. Well, here's the problem. Insulin gets more sluggish, gets higher as we age, especially after 40 or going into perimenopause. That's why so many of you complain to me that you're starting to get a belly or you're starting to get belly fat. We've gotta beat insulin we've got to understand how to keep it down. And a great way to check it is to check a fasting insulin level, check a C-peptide, a leptin level, and even a fasting glucose and hemoglobin A1C. When you put all of that information together, you understand very clearly that your insulin levels are in the right place, or you may need a diet and lifestyle change to help bring those insulin levels down. We'll talk more about how to manage high insulin in my next video, but for right now, let's move on to hormone number two. This is estrogen. Now, most of you know what estrogen is, right? When it's in the right place, we feel amazing. Great hair, great skin, good energy, good focus, good bones, right? And even a healthy gut. But when that estrogen gets out of control, what happens? Well, if it's too little, it's hot flashes, night sweats, and so many of these symptoms, foggy brain, even studies that say that our brain might shrink with a lack of estrogen. When we have too much estrogen, it's the breast tenderness, the belly bloat. Estrogen actually can make insulin levels go even higher. So estrogen and insulin work together. Well, how do you know where your estrogen is? Well, there are a couple of different ways to check it. You can check a circulating estradiol level that will fluctuate depending on where you are in your cycle. It'll be static if you're in menopause or on the birth control pill. You can also check an estrone level, which is an estrogen metabolite. That in turn helps to see how much estrogen you're storing. And honestly, you don't want to store a lot of estrogen. Well, how do you know how to interpret this stuff if you're cycling? And this is something we hear from so many doctors all the time. Can't check those hormones. You're on a cycle. We have no way of standardizing it. Standardizing it. You know, hear that word over and over again. Guys, it's really easy. All we need to understand is we don't want an estradiol level over 150. We don't want an estrone level over 150. And at the same time, we don't want circulating estrogen under 50, and we don't want an estrone level also to be under 50. These are lab core values, quest values, if you go to get those numbers checked. Now, many of us also like one more additional way of checking hormones, stored hormones, stored estrogen, whether it's in the blood or in the urine or in saliva. So you can do saliva testing, urine testing as an additional way Way to understand what your hormones are doing. All right, we talked about insulin, we talked about estrogen. The two are related. Estrogen goes up, you become estrogen dominant. Then you're gonna also have insulin resistance. It all works together. And why might you have estrogen dominance? Well, it's due to hormone number three. Hormone number three is progesterone. Progesterone is a magic hormone. It really is. You know, I think it kind of saved me. I actually started having low progesterone back in my 20s and had to go on some bioidentical progesterone at that time. Now, a quick refresher course here. Remember, progesterone is produced in the latter half of our cycle, but it's actually also an anti-inflammatory. It's calming, it brings our cortisol levels down, and it really helps to balance out estrogen levels. So many women at any age, right? Me in my 20s, my daughter at 13, 14, are walking around with high estrogen, low progesterone, and as a result, getting super anxious, having trouble sleeping at night, maybe Maybe even experiencing a hot flash or a night sweat or two when all they needed was some progesterone. Now we're gonna dive into how to boost those progesterone levels. There's some natural ways to do it. The gut makes a big difference, the liver makes a big difference, and there's always the option of hormone replacement therapy, which we'll talk more about in my next
next video as well. All right, so we got down to three. I said there were seven. We've got more to go. Let's keep going here. Let's try to pick up the pace a little bit. We've talked insulin, we've talked estrogen, we've talked progesterone. What about the thyroid, right? It sits right here at the base of the neck. So many of you come to me with thyroid issues, thyroid imbalances. I could probably write books on the thyroid, quite honestly. Actually, I could write a book on each of these hormones, but I'm giving you the cliff note version for all of this. So your thyroid, remember, responsible for metabolism, hair, skin, gut health, constipation, bone health, and so much more. When the thyroid is sluggish, you are hypothyroid. That in turn leads to hair fall, hair loss, all these other symptoms that we talk about, more constipation, more weight gain. How do you check this stuff? You also wanna know if you're hyperthyroid. So you wanna look at a TSH. You ideally want a TSH to be between one and two. We want to look at a total and free T4 and T3. And we've got to start looking at these antibodies, guys. No one's checking these antibodies routinely. So your thyroglobulin antibody, your thyroid peroxidase antibodies, so important to check because we are seeing so many cases of missed Hashimoto's, which is an autoimmune thyroid issue that often needs to be treated differently from a classic hypothyroid or hyperthyroidism, all right? Thyroid, we got through four hormones. Let's move on to the next one. The next hormone we wanna talk about is actually cortisol stress hormone. You guys all know this hormone well. You experience it probably on a daily basis if you're juggling and trying to pummel through all your to-do lists, but cortisol is good in small quantities. It keeps us motivated, gets us out of bed in the morning, but too much cortisol is going to leave us in the state of fight or flight, adrenaline pumping all the time, which simply is not good for us. When we've got too much cortisol, then in turn, we'll have issues with sleep at night. We might be tired all day, but wired all night. And that's just not a great combination for feeling super powered. Am I right or am I right? So we wanna get cortisol levels balanced. How do you check it? Well, in blood, you can check a morning cortisol level. Otherwise, we like to look at saliva cortisol profiles because they give us a wider range of kind of what to check and what to look at throughout the day. All right, that was hormone number five. What is hormone number six? Who can guess it? Well, it's testosterone, right? We know it as the libido hormone, but it's not just about libido. It's also also about muscle mass, how you're able to build muscle. It's about bone health, brain health, depression, and so much more. We want to keep testosterone optimized. Again, it doesn't mean you run out and go grab your nearest testosterone and shoot it in your arm. That often has side effects and is simply not the best option. What we do want to do is find ways to build testosterone naturally, either through nutrient replacement, exercise, or so much more. But how do you check it? How do you even know it's an issue for you? Look at a total and a free testosterone. Those are, those are the two testosterone levels that I think are really important to know. Now, if your testosterone is too high, over 30, or that free testosterone is over two or three, then oftentimes you're in my PCOS world, right there with me, right? Where those are high androgens, and those in turn lead to hair thinning, they lead to more acne, back acne, a lot of these symptoms that we talk about with PCOS and endometriosis, lots of videos on my channel talking about both both of those conditions. So check, you can check testosterone in blood, you can check it in saliva as well, but that's another hormone that's important to know. All right, last, but certainly not least, is DHEA. So DHEA is another adrenal hormone, kind of related to cortisol, again, responsible for our energy, our brain fog, and so much more. We wanna understand what our DHEA levels are. Ideally, they're around 150, maybe going up to 200, but if you're going above that, then you're back in androgen world where you're dealing with PCOS. So those are the seven hormones that I want you guys to know and know cold and know your numbers. I'm gonna quiz you. So get these hormones checked. Many of them can be done in blood through routine lab work. It doesn't have to be fancy, you know, expensive profiles. But again, it's the tracking. It's the understanding where you are month to month, season to season, that makes the difference. So go out there, get them checked. Our hormones are our power. They're a part of us being super powered. So why in the world would we neglect this? All right, I'll be reporting back to you guys. I wanna see how you you're doing with your hormones and I'll continue to post some videos all about how to get this stuff balanced. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you guys soon.